Meet Baxter. It's a new kind of robot designed to work in manufacturing in ways that most of today's robots can't. Only a few hundred Baxters have been sold since it hit the market last year. But the startup making him, Rethink Robotics, is hoping that the technology they are developing will help unleash a new kind of industrial robot. The Baxter is very simple to train. We train this particular task in about five minutes before the show opened this morning. So basically what Baxter is going to be doing here is it will grab these parts and hang them on this rack. And as you'll see, it's going to grab each part in a different location and it's going to place it in the configuration that we've defined. Baxter is also smart enough to know if it loses a part in the process, it's not going to complete that task. It's going to stop and it's going to go back and look for a new part. So it recognizes that it dropped the part along the way. It didn't try to complete that task on its own thinking that it had a part. It recognized that it did not have that part any longer. So that's very useful in a manufacturing environment where things happen, parts get dropped, people move things. Um, it, can, it can adapt very well to those sort of fluid environments. This all makes Baxter different from the industrial robots traditionally used on a factory floor. Those robots are larger, stronger, but often too dangerous for humans to work close to. They're popular, especially in industries like car manufacturing, but they are not good at more delicate tasks. Baking consumer electronics, for example, requires bending flexible wires or picking out small parts and positioning them correctly near other small components. That can be tricky for most of today's robots to handle. Rodney Brooks is the founder of Rethink. Before founding it, he led a company named iRobot, most famously the maker of the Roomba, a popular robotic vacuum cleaner. We developed Baxter to be a robot that was safe to interact with, that was low cost, that could go into small factories, and that ordinary factory workers could train to do simple tasks. And we really think of Baxter as a productivity tool to increase the productivity of American workers or European workers or Japanese workers. We're, we're trying to offload the dull, repetitive tasks that are done in factories, which for the last 30 or 40 years have been outsourced to China where labor is, costs are now going up so that it no longer makes sense to outsource them to China. So we probably should be doing them at home in the US or at home in Europe. Baxter is sort of like an automobile. You buy it off the lot and it's got the sensors, it's got the planning software, it's got the vision software. It can go in and do tasks straight away. It doesn't need that heavy systems integration. Baxter, he emphasizes, is not meant to replace us humans just make us better at some of the tasks we're already pretty well designed to do. Dull repetitive tasks people do not want to do, so let the robot do those. Let the robot and the people be working side by side, sort of an integrated workforce. People do the things they're great at, which is dexterity, visual acuity, and let the robot do stuff that it's good at. It just doesn't get bored. It can just do stuff again and again and again. Current robots, Baxter and industrial robots, are totally undextrous compared to even a, a young child. These things that we have here are just magnificent devices connected to our brains. And so dexterity is going to be the domain of people for a long, long time to come.